Hello, my lovelies, and welcome back to Bedtime Stories with Celosia Crane and another story from Hans Christian Andersen. As you notice, I'm kind of sticking with a flower spring feel because it is April and we are starting to see the start of the new year in this new season. So today I'm going to read to you The Daisy. Now listen, in the country, close by the high road, stood a farmhouse. Perhaps you have passed by and seen it yourself. There was a little flower garden with a painted wooden palings in front of it. Close by was a ditch. On its fresh green bank grew a little daisy. The sun shone as warmly and brightly upon it as on the magnificent flower garden, and therefore it thrived well. One morning it had quite opened, and its little snow-white petals stood round the yellow center, like the rays of the sun. It did not mind that nobody saw it in the grass, and that it was a poor, despised flower. On the contrary, it was quite happy and turned towards the sun, looking upward and listening to the song of the lark high up in the air. The little daisy was as happy as if the day had been a great holiday. But it was only Monday. All the children were at school, and while they were sitting on the forms and learning their lessons, it sat on its thin green stalk and learnt from the sun and from its surrounding how kind God is and it rejoiced that the song of the little lark expressed so sweetly and distinctly its own feelings. With a sort of reverence, the daisy looked up to the bird that could fly and sing, but it did not feel envious. I can see and hear, it thought. The sun shines upon me and the forest kisses me. How rich I am! In the garden close by grew many large and magnificent flowers, and, strange to say, the less fragrance they had, the haughtier and prouder they were. The peonies puffed themselves up in order to be larger than the roses. But size is not everything. The tulips had the finest colors, and they knew it well, too. For they were standing bolt upright like candles, that one might see them the better. In their pride, they did not see the little daisy, which looked over to them and thought, How rich and beautiful they are! I am sure the pretty bird will fly down and call upon them. Thank God that I stand so near and can at least see all the splendor. And while the daisy was still thinking, the lark came flying down, crying, Tweet! But not to the peonies and tulips, no, into the grass to the poor daisy. Its joy was so great that it did not know what to think. The little bird hopped round it and sang, How beautifully soft the grass is, and what a lovely little flower with its golden heart and silver dress is growing here. The yellow center of the daisy did indeed look like gold, while the little petals shone as brightly as silver. How happy the daisy was! No one has the least idea. The bird kissed it with its beak, sang to it, and then rose up again to the blue sky. It was certainly more than a quarter of an hour before the daisy recovered its senses. Half ashamed, yet glad at heart, it looked over to the other flowers in the garden. Surely they had witnessed its pleasure, and the honor that had been done to it, they understood its joy. But the tulips stood more stiffly than ever. Their faces were pointed and red because they were vexed. The peonies were sulky. It was well that they could not speak, otherwise they would have given the daisy a good lecture. The little flower could very well see that they were ill at ease, and pitied them sincerely. Shortly after this, a girl came into the garden with a large, sharp knife. She went to the tulips and began cutting them off, one after another. Oh, 
sighed the daisy. That is terrible. Now they are done for. The girl carried the tulips away. The daisy was glad that it was outside, and only a small flower. It felt very grateful. At sunset it folded its petals and fell asleep, and drummed all night of the sun and the little bird. On the following morning, when the flower once more stretched forth its tender petals, like little arms toward the air and light, the daisy recognized the bird's voice. But what it sang sounded so sad. Indeed, the poor bird had good reason to be sad, for it had been caught and put into a cage close by the open window. It sang of the happy days when it could merrily fly about, of fresh green corn in the fields, and of the time when it could soar almost up to the clouds. The poor lark was most unhappy as a prisoner in a cage. The little daisy would have liked so much to help it, but what could be done? Indeed, that was very difficult for such a small flower to find out. It entirely forgot how beautiful everything around it was, how warmly the sun was shining, and how splendidly white its own petals were. It could only think of the poor captive bird, for which it could do nothing. Then two little boys came out of the garden. One of them had a large, sharp knife, like that with which the girl had cut the tulips. They came straight toward the little daisy, which could not understand what they wanted. "'Here is a fine piece of turf for the lark,' said one of the boys, and began to cut out a square round the daisy so that it remained in the center of the grass. "'Pluck the flower off,' said the other boy, and the daisy trembled for fear for to be pulled off meant death to it, and it wished so much to live, as it was to go with the square of turf into the poor captive lark's cage. "'No, let it stay,' said the other boy. "'It looks so pretty.' And so it stayed, and was brought into the lark's cage. The poor bird was lamenting its lost liberty and beating its wings against the wire." and the little daisy could not speak or utter a consoling word, much as it would have liked to do so. So the forenoon passed. "'I have no water,' said the captive lark. "'They have all gone out and forgotten to give me anything to drink. My throat is dry and burning. I feel as if I had a fire and ice within me, and the air is so oppressive. Alas!' I must die and part with the warm sunshine, the fresh green meadows, and all the beauty that God has created. And it thrust its beak into the piece of grass to refresh itself a little. Then it noticed the little daisy and nodded to it and kissed it with its beak and said, You must also fade in here, poor little flower. You and the piece of grass are all they have given me in exchange for the whole world, which I enjoyed outside. Each little blade of grass shall be a green tree for me, each of your white petals a fragrant flower. Alas, you only remind me of what I have lost. I wish I could console the poor lark, thought the daisy. It could not move one of its leaves, but the fragrance of its delicate petals streamed forth, and was much stronger than such flowers usually have. The bird noticed it although it was dying with thirst, and in its pain tore up the green blades of grass, but did not touch the flower. The evening came, and nobody appeared to bring the poor bird a drop of water. It opened its beautiful wings and fluttered about in its anguish. A faint and mournful tweet-tweet was all it could utter. Then it bent its little head toward the flower, and its heart broke for want and longing. The flower could not, as on the previous evening, fold up its petals and sleep. It dropped sorrowfully. The boys only came the next morning. When they saw the dead bird, they began to cry bitterly, dug a nice grave for it, and adorned it with flowers. The bird's body was placed in a pretty red box. They wished to bury it with royal honors. 
While it was alive and sang, they forgot it, and let it suffer want in the cage. Now they cried over it and covered it with flowers. The piece of turf with the daisy in it was thrown out on the dusty highway. Nobody thought of the flower, which had felt so much for the bird, and had so greatly desired to comfort it. And that's the end of The Daisy by Hans Christian Andersen. It's a little bit of a sadder one. Let me know what you guys thought. Bedtime Stories with Celosia Crane is supported solely through my Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Celosia Crane. You can support the podcast for as little as $1 a month. However, if you don't want to sign up for a monthly support, you can also head on over to my merchandise store, which is society6, the number 6, dot com forward slash Celosia Crane. I have a variety of mugs and also coasters and tote bags and things all adorned with adorable graphics and the name of the podcast. So head on over to society6.com forward slash Celosia Crane and take a peek. Thank you guys for listening. I'll be back again next week.